Starship's launch was a spectacular sight as it lifted off the pad with the thrust of dozens of Raptor engines. The powerful rocket had a significant impact on the surrounding area, affecting structures and systems within hundreds of kilometers. One of the most critical components was the launch pad itself, which sustained some damage during liftoff. What was the extent of the damage, and how will it affect future launches? Elon Musk and SpaceX's inspection team have shared some updates on this issue. Let's explore all the details details and implications of Starship's launch pad damage in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The recent launch of SpaceX's Ship 25 and Booster 9 was a remarkable achievement, but it also revealed some issues with the spacecraft's quick disconnect arm. This component is responsible for separating the ship and booster during ascent, and it appeared to be misaligned after the launch. Thanks to Starship Gazer, who shared some excellent close-up photos, we can analyze the possible causes and impacts of this anomaly. There are two main hypotheses for why the quick disconnect arm was not in its expected position. One is that the arm detached too late from the ship, disrupting the delicate timing of the separation maneuver. The other is that the arm was subjected to excessive stresses from the 33 Raptor engines of the Super Heavy booster, which generated immense thrust during launch. A closer look at the photos reveals some worrying signs at the hydraulic piston connection point of the quick disconnect arm. This is where the arm attaches to the ship, and it should have two pistons on each side. However, one of them seems to be missing, possibly broken off by the powerful exhaust plume of Booster 9's engines. The loss of this piston could have contributed to the misalignment of the arm. Such anomalies are not trivial in the field of space exploration, where every detail matters. SpaceX will need to investigate and resolve this issue before attempting another flight for Starship. In fact, SpaceX performed a post-launch inspection of the QD to determine the cause and extent of the deviation. The QD is a complex component that connects the Starship to the launch tower and provides power, data, and propellant. It also adjusts its position to align with the Starship during stacking. The QD is essential for the safety and success of future launches, so SpaceX strives to achieve perfection in its operation. Fortunately, the deviation did not damage any critical parts of the QD, such as cables or fuel lines. This indicates that the electronic engine technology at the front end of the QD is working well. However, SpaceX will continue to fine tune the QD and implement any necessary measures to prevent similar deviations in the future. Next, what many people are curious about now is the actual condition of the launch pad system, or stage zero. And I can honestly say that things are truly fantastic down here. While we were still curious to see the condition of the cooling steel plate, Musk recently posted an announcement with live images directly below the launch pad, captioned, just inspected the Starship launch pad and it is in great condition. No refurbishment needed to the water-cooled steel plate for next launch. Congrats to SpaceX team and contractors for engineering and building such a robust system so rapidly. Indeed, just take a look at these pictures. They show a massive and relatively clean launch pad, despite facing the power of 33 Raptor engines tuned to the max, demonstrating significant recovery capabilities. One of the key components under scrutiny was the flame deflector plate, which performed admirably in its first test against the immense power of the engines. The expected charring of the concrete and fond, along with visible wear on painted locations on the OLM and the base of the tower, attested to the forces at play. However, the deflector plate, crucial for redirecting the fiery exhaust away from the launch pad, remained intact. Taking a closer look at the launch pad has revealed its durability. Aside from scattered small debris, there were no conspicuous signs of large concrete chunks or rebar damage. Zooming in on specific components, the extent of damage to the equipment on the pad's surface has been assessed. While one of the drive units supporting the extended arm appears to have shifted, causing a noticeable tilt, the overall structure remains intact. The BQD cover, though fragile, seems to have withstood the launch without any major problems. Although some minor damage was noted, including cracks and potential vent cap displacement, the launch pad largely weathered the formidable forces unleashed during the flight. In this second launch, the steel cooling structure and the deluge system not only performed exceptionally well, but also benefited from SpaceX's improvement in the Raptor engine ignition speed. This strategic move was announced by Musk beforehand with the aim of quickly dis 
distancing the spacecraft from the launch tower. The intentional action stems from the potential catastrophic damage that could occur if the vehicle encounters a malfunction in the early stages of flight, which could cause it to crash back down onto the pad. With a four-second ignition and Starship rapidly creating distance from the launch pad, it gracefully and impressively ascended. A recently posted slow-mo clip by Musk reveals the impressive size and brightness of the exhaust plume produced by the combined might of the 33 Raptor engines firing simultaneously. Overall, SpaceX reported that the ground systems encountered some minor glitches that did not affect the mission. The company is working to resolve these issues before the next flight test. What's more important, even more than the challenges encountered with the Starship rocket during this flight, was when the termination system was activated once again, leading to the loss of both vehicles. The Starship mission has indeed made significant progress by achieving five out of the six set goals. The first is takeoff without destroying the launch pad, a notable improvement from the first flight test. Second, all 33 booster engines fired for the full mission duration, addressing the issue of engine shutdown observed in the initial test. Third, the successful functioning of the new hot stage separation system, an upgraded feature introduced after the first stage separation failure. Fourth, is the correct startup of the second stage rocket motors following stage separation. Fifth, is the successful operation of the flight termination system to destroy the vehicle if commanded, a process that failed to do so in a timely manner during the April Starship test. The final milestone is achieving orbit with Starship, which is to be anticipated and realized in the third orbital flight. Musk has already hinted at a shorter timeline with the next launch expected in three to four weeks. The pace of progress is accelerating, providing an exciting timeline. However, official announcements regarding the root causes of issues during the flight and report from government agencies on environmental checks are pending. Whether political rivalries and skeptics within the industry perceive any setbacks and use regulatory bodies like the FAA and FWS as grounds for suspension, the uncertainty lies in the potential scrutiny that may arise. However, if the launch pad and its surroundings emerge relatively unscathed, and if there are no grievances voiced, SpaceX gains the liberty to swiftly implement necessary fixes and improvements. With a fleet of candidate vehicles primed and awaiting upgrades, the company stands poised to resume flights promptly once all enhancements and modifications are in place. Having said that, it would have been nice if Starship had survived into its suborbital trajectory and tested out the, the heat shield tiles. But no one should complain at the amazing progress of this, the largest rocket ever built and flown, and one that will soon be a reusable, relatively inexpensive, heavy-duty, quick turnaround workhorse. The November 18th launch event marked marked significant milestones in the journey toward deploying a functional vehicle. The work is still in progress, but it's rapidly iterating and improving. Without regulatory barriers, additional test launches could occur within a few months, possibly even weeks, as per Musk's target. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below, because your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. So for that, once again, we thank you so much and we hope to see you again next time.